Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q and A show on Inside the Burbs YouTube. You <laughs> Inside the Burbs YouTube channel. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Avant. I'm here with my main man, Quinn Michael. Say what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Ooh, can't wait to get into this, man. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah, but before we get into the game, let's do a little house cleaning. Thank you to everyone at Inside the Birds for this opportunity, to Adam and Jeff and Josh, everyone that's responsible. Thank you guys to all the fans that are tuning in. Make sure that you guys email your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, thank you guys for all, all that you do. Um, all the fans that show me love on the street, thank you guys for tuning in to us. And uh, let's get into this Birds game. The Birds fall to the Seahawks out in Seattle. They haven't won there in over 15 years and counting. Eagles lose 20 to 17. Um, they were leading most of the game. Then Drew Locke. Hits Jackson, Smith, and Jigba for a 21-yard go-ahead touchdown on your favorite cornerback, James Bradbury, with 28 seconds left in the game. Seattle then closed the door on Jalen Hurts with a circle. It wasn't a circle post, but it was circus and go or circus pump route. Um, Julian Love from the Giants. Gets Is that him? him? Jaylen, yep. Is that the Love same guy? Oh, my God. I'm yeah. so sick of that guy. Julian Love from the Giants <laughs> gets oh, two picks man. on Jalen Hurts. Both Giants balled out. Leonard Williams and Julian yeah, Love. Love. Right. So, uh, let's let's talk about it. What's the state of the team and how you feeling, Q? Yeah, you know, um, it was funny. I was thinking about this today. And, um, you know, Nick Sirianni, he's, he's had so much um, – so much success early in his career, um, his head coaching career. And I'm thinking like, okay, this is the first time really that this team and this coach has had to deal with some adversity. And so, um, you know, right now it's, it's tough to tell. I mean, obviously, you know, we'll get into it, uh, you know, the big moves and, and the, you know, the, the big move involving the side last week. And, you know, it's just, it just feels it feels right now like this team is starting to to reel a little bit. Like they're kind of grasping at at straws. They're starting to, you know, you, you're starting to see chinks in the armor, right? You're starting to see um, some holes here and there. And um, it'll be interesting to see how they how they deal with this adversity and if they can bounce back. And if if Nick Sirianni can coach them through that, right? Mm -hmm. The the mark of a good coach to me is not necessarily obviously X's and O's, right? And motivation. But how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with things that aren't going so great? And so this will be interesting to see how they kind of fight through this and see how they respond. I agree. Um, here's my thought process on it. One, it was an awful loss on the team. It was an awful loss. They're without their starting quarterback. They're without... Um, one of their best cornerbacks, Tyreek Woolen, went out the game for a while. There's a lot of things that went on in that particular game. They're starting Drew Locke. Uh, we have the lead the entire game. And uh, Jalen didn't play well in this game. But let's talk about the, the tire, like the, the state of the Eagles. The Eagles are showing so much vulnerability at this moment. There's too much dog whistling and too much finger pointing that's going on. Jalen Hurts coming out in the press conference talking about a lack of commitment. That's unnecessary for Jalen Hurts to say in that moment. And it could be, but that's not what you do in order to give the media more fuel to their fire, which in this city can set a blaze really fast. It's like throwing water on a grease fire. It'll blow your house up if you keep going that way. So you get that coming from Jalen Hurts. Then you get the Sean Desai coaching change that wasn't known until Sunday, right? And then Nick Sirianni double talking. I trust my coaches. 
then it was I'm part of that decision that made Matt Patricia defense coordinator for this for this week. So you got that. Then you got AJ Brown talking after the game, saying the only thing we can do is run routes, catch balls, and whatever. Everything else we may not like it, but insinuate that the play calling and or Jalen Hurts is not playing well or whatever. We don't know. But when you start hearing guys talk like this, last week it was an anonymous guy, right? So when you start to hear guys talk like this, you know you know that there's smoke there. You know that there's fire there. So this team is starting to implode. And Sirianni has to do a better job of learning how to reel these guys in and let them know, hey, man, it's not your job to talk to the media. That's my job. Don't give them anything. Keep it close to the vest. I know you're frustrated, but protect each other when you're frustrated. And it'll go by a lot smoother than what's happening now. Now the media knows that there's a weakness. Now they're going to continually ask questions. Now they're going to kind of continue to um, get more information out and try to turn this team against each other. So I think it's going badly at this moment. I agree. Yeah, I agree, man. Yeah. So with with that being said, Q, offense, defense, let's start to think about some of the things that have taken place. What do you think um, is the biggest problem with this team, biggest problems with this team? I know we talk about passing defense. We talk about run, talk about run stopping. You know, they went for over 100-something yards last night. Kenneth Walker was was cutting through everything last night. Um, Jalen Hurts, play calling. What do you think the biggest problems are? It's 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 crazy. You know, it's to me too. Like looking at it, it's crazy that this team is 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 ten and ten and three, mm -hmm. um, with all the holes and all the things that we've been talking about each week, and it, and it never seems to get better. I do think that the defense is getting slightly better. Um, you know, I, I saw them playing a little bit more downhill attacking the run game a little bit better, filling gaps and understanding where they're supposed to be. Um, you know, defensively, third down has got to get better. They're they're getting killed on third down. They're getting killed in the red zone. Um, I think I saw stat today. Um, you know, they're 47% in the uh on um on third down or is it a third? Yeah, third down, down is like 48, 47. 48, 40, yeah, 48, 47, like eight or nine. Yeah, like 48. Uh, and that's that's just that's ridiculous. I mean, you can't win any games. They're dead last in the NFL in third down, right? Yeah. So you know, just you got a lot of young guys in that back end. You know, I feel like it's time for them to grow up. They've they've gotten enough experience. They've played enough. You know, Reed, um, Brown. You know, those guys. They, it's it's time now. You're a veteran now. It's time for you guys to step up and and make plays and. And you know, understand where you're supposed to be, and 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 be a leader, man. Talk to your teammates. Get get everybody on the same page. And so, you know, I just think defensively, we they're just not getting better fast enough, and they're not putting their stamp on it. You know what I mean? Like they're not going out there with the mindset of we're going to stop anybody. They they don't have that dog in them, in the sense of I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's if it's Drew Lock. I don't care if it's Pat Mahomes, we come into play. And I think that for two downs, every game is like for two downs, they'll play great. Then it comes a third down, they'll give up something silly, right? Yeah. They'll play really great for an entire drive, and then they'll have a mental error and, and blow a coverage, and then team scores for a touchdown. They'll be in good position and won't fight for the ball. They'll be in good position and, you know, grab a receiver when they don't need to. So it's just frustrating stuff like that, where it's they're shooting themselves in the foot over and over and over again. And to me, it comes down to coaching. And we've been saying this the whole time. It's coaching, it's coaching, it's coaching. Like these guys can play, but you gotta you gotta focus on the the little small details. That's the stuff that matters in these games, especially towards the end of the year. Yeah. Defensively, yeah. I agree. I thought that that's I thought that they play well. Not yeah. well in, in, in for them. 20 points, giving up 20 points is not bad. Yeah. It's just not giving up 20 points to a team. That's nothing. You give up 20 points, you're supposed to win. Yeah. And that's yeah. just the truth. Any defense that give up 20 points, miss me with 
the the Bradbury stuff. And yeah, we know that Bradbury hadn't played well. And I'm not expecting him to all of a sudden turn into Deion Sanders on the last drive. No, we got to make sure that we're not in that situation with the game on the line. And the offense did everything that they could in order to lose the ball game. And we end up losing the game because of the offense and the offense majority of the time. The defense had multiple three and outs in that drive, and we haven't saw that in I don't know how many weeks, right? Yeah. Um, had multiple three and outs in that. We didn't capitalize on all of them. Uh, another thing, too, the, the thing I will say is that both teams ran the ball pretty good, so it limited the possessions in the in the ball game. Both teams only had nine offensive possessions. That's oh. norm, normally between, you know, you normally get about 12. Right. So they were able to limit uh, to eliminate three total possessions or six possessions between two between the two teams because, uh, you know, they ran the ball so well, both teams. Now, here's my thing. Everyone's saying fire, fire Brian Johnson. And I don't like his play calling. Like he ran 17 million hand routes in that last game. It was a bunch of hank routes. And I know yeah. Seattle is a cover three team. Ex explain and what the hank route is. Okay, so Hank route is this is named after Hank Stram, uh, Hank Stram, the Hall of Fame Chiefs coach from back in the early 1900s, right, 1940s, whatever it was, right, that he was where he was coaching, right. So the Hank concept is this: by number one, it's a curl route, twelve, and you come back straight to the quarterback. Then number two goes to the flat route. Back in those times, they would play a lot of cover three defense. So Hank Schramm was very famous for running this. So we just, everyone just calls it Hank concept. And it's a concept that works. And it's been in the NFL throughout the decades because of, you know, this particular person. And everyone runs Hank. And the third guy can run over the ball. He can, you know, it's a bunch of things that you do with the third guy. But the concept is basically a curl flat. And cover three has a curl flat defender. You pull the flat defender out by going to the flat. And then now you're one-on-one -on -one with a guy that has to cover the third um, half of the field. So he doesn't want to let you over the top. So you can get a curl back to the quarterback pretty easily. And we ran a bunch of those. And a lot of them were open. And Jalen Hurts did not read it right. And that is the freaking simplest read that you can have at quarterback at, that's a five-step drop. The only thing is simpler is three-step. When it comes to five-step timing, the easiest concept you're going to have is Hank. Mm -hmm. Is it? Right. And if you know Hank, you see a single safety middle, you know where you're going at the, with the ball. I'm going to break this down later because it's just some stuff that I don't like. We're in a bunch of Hanks, so I don't necessarily – like love all that Brian Johns had. I understand why it's in a game plan because of the cover three defense that Seattle plays. So it was appropriately put in the game plan. We just ran a bunch of it. Yeah. All right. So by the yeah. time third, fourth quarter came on, they kind of knew what was up. But I would say more than Brian Johnson, this game fell on the shoulders of Jalen Hurts. And that right there is something that can be fixed. But Jalen has to do a full check in the mirror. The lack of commitment. And I know you flew out with the flu or the COVID or whatever you had and you played. We applaud you for that. However, you showed up. You got to play at a high level. And you did not play at a high level. I, and let, let, me, let, me, let me put, let me, let me, let me, if you got something, go ahead and interject there, Q, if you need to. Yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, okay. I agree. I'm I'm the same way. Like if you if you're there, if you're showing up, you gotta play. You gotta play. So look, here we go right here. And this is me, me, me charting the game, right? First offensive series, they go down, score a touchdown, do a real good job converting third downs. A lot of quarterback runs. Jalen end up running it in left side, right? Mm -hmm. Receiver screens, bubble screens, they do a bunch of that stuff, open and drive, right? The one thing I will say is that. It's not Brian Johnson's fault that we don't have the personnel that we need. Remember Zach Pascal? 
Zach Pascal mm-hmm. was the guy that got the screen started. Our guys out there, whether it's AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, are too freaking soft. Yeah. Too freaking soft. They don't take the fight to anybody. They go backwards into the ball carrier, and you got to have some nuts to be out there. And right now, our nuts are not big enough to be out there. So it's a part of the game plan that was successful and that we did make yards last year. And because we don't have a guy that's tough enough to get the screen game on the outside started, we are ineffective in running it. So that's not a Brian Johnson thing. That's a personnel thing. And that's a a leadership thing. And Mm -hmm. AJ Brown can talk in the media Jalen Hurst can talk in the media. A.J. Brown, unless you're willing to step up there, you big, strong, you run through tackles, you can get in fights with people, but you can't block for your dude and not get him blew up. That's bullshit. Like the kids say, bullshit. That's what that is. (laughs) Bullshit. That's what that is. I I don't know how to to put that any other way. Yeah. And it's happening, and guys are getting hit. You you throw Devonte Smith out there. Why the hell is he out there, Coach? Blocking for for uh for Goddard. Dallas Goddard. <laughs> I thought that was crazy. What? That don't make sense. <laughs> if I'm Dallas Goddard, I'm like Tom. Look, no, you you catch it. I'll block. <laughs> Certain things just don't make sense, man. And then can we freaking get it right? The dude on the ball is the blocker. I don't want to see again the guy on the ball or close to the ball coming off the line to catch it and the dude in the back is the one that's blocking stuff like that. You don't want to see that stupid stuff, man. Yeah. All right. And and for goodness sake, you can't go down the field and block, but you got to be strong. Michael Jackson was out there beating the hell out of us. Number 30. Never even seen a dude before. (laughs) I heard his name a lot. Yeah, I'm damn damn Michael Jackson out there moonwalking all over. All right, all right. So, so with that with that being said, a lot of these a lot of these games, Jalen, Jalen. The problem right now, bigger than Brian Johnson. Because the plays are not the greatest. I, I can't I can't front on you. I can't say that, that Brian uh-huh. Johnson's play calling is great. I can't I can't I can't lie to you and say that I enjoy the concepts. I sometimes I don't even know what the hell the concepts are. Uh yeah. but I do see guys open and I do see opportunities there, and I do see Jalen Hurts still flustered with inside rushes that we talked about on this show. Seattle collapsing the pocket inside, and because they're clapping inside, Jalen Hurts is is running backwards, not even stepping into throws, but trying to get out of there as quick as possible, either scrambling or just going straight back and not going through his progression. Missing dudes, flat out, and that's just the truth. And I'm going to show you guys on tape a little bit later, and I don't want to keep dominating the conversation, Q. We can go to No, no, no. Good, man. No, I... I've... And I and I hate to use the word regressed because I, I don't know if that's what we're seeing right now. I do think I do agree with you. I do think that the play calling, like I'm I'm watching, I'm watching some of the the route schemes, and I'm like, who is he supposed to throw it to? I mean, we're talking three guys running eight, 10, 15 yard routes, no outlet, nobody for them to check down to. Mm-hmm. Um. So I do think it's 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 a complicated mixture of bad. I think across the board with this team, this is what I think: it's bad coaching, bad game planning, players not understanding their assignments, players arguing with each other, not trusting each other. It's just a big um, amalgamation of just bad football across mm. the board, yeah. and you know, and I, and I think it just it just starts. It starts with the coaching staff, yeah. And you know, it, it's where it's always started from. They gotta, put, they gotta, you know, buckle down and and really understand. Like this is job. Job should be on the line at this point, right? You yeah. know, um, it's yeah. it's just it's it's truly frustrating. And this is how you know that Jalen is not playing well when the quarterback is not seeing it right. 
you limit the amount of people that are getting the ball. That's just how it is. The third, fourth, fifth guy in the rotation don't get passes. But and then and then you're not able to you're not able to react what to, to what the defense is giving you when you're when you're not seeing it well. And now if the defense mess up, you can't see it because you've already predetermined where you're going. All right, you guys. So this is a simple play. Right now it's second and 13. We just have to get the ball. We have we have to get some yards um, in order to get back in position, right? Their defense is in a cover three. They're in a, a simple cover three defense. Um, if you're going to read right as a quarterback, you stay right. If you're going to read left, you stay left. You can't go back and forth when it comes to um, your concept in this situation. This is this is a, a side of the field read because both of them have stop routes. Both of them have um, this inside fade and in, in concept here. So it's, it's one side or the other. So Jalen um, right now should pick one of the sides of the field and stay on them. So he picks right, okay? He wants to throw this ball to Devontae Smith, which is in the slot. They're not going to give him that um, right away. The guy up top is Gainwell. If you're going to go up top, you throw the ball right now to Gainwell. Gainwell is going to gain probably about six or seven yards right here. Right here. That's the concept. You decide to go right first. Throw the ball to Gainwell because that's where the ball is telling you to go in cover three. The hook defender, the flat defender is tied up with number one. So go to him now. That's right there. If you pick left, Dot got it right now. These are dudes that are wide open. Look, you have a clean enough pocket to throw this. Where are you going? Mm. There's, a, what, there's nobody getting beat. Still, everybody's in front. There's nobody getting beat. Why are you running? Damn. So I counted three people that could have got the ball. Goddard could have got the ball if he read left. He didn't read left. He went right first. Then he came back left. You still can throw him the ball. You can throw the ball right here to Julio Jones if you want to. Everybody is in front of their man in the pocket. Wow. The pocket is good, Jalen. Wow. That's, that's not crazy. that's not that's not a Brian Johnson thing. This next play is going to be frustrating because this play here is a second and eight. This is the next play. I want you guys to watch something because Sirianni talked about this motion. We get to things different ways. Look at what motion does to a team. They want a six-man pressure right here, right? So that means they have five people to cover, right? We have four available targets, so they're going to have one safety back, and everybody else is supposed to be in man coverage, right? Mm -hmm. Quiz Watkins goes in motion. Like I said, this is man coverage. Artie Burns busts the coverage. The quarterback is supposed to be seeing this. Right? Mm -hmm. He he may not think it's man. But check this out. Right now, you should. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Wow. Right now, you should. He busted. He busted this. Two, two of these over here, it's only one person over here. Wow. Okay? Now... Look at Jalen Hurts. This is not how you drop back, okay? He's straight back, straight up and down, no base, no leverage, no nothing. He's already determined that he's going to throw this double move out here to A.J. Brown. He's already – because he's not seeing what's happening, what's taking place. Because if you, if you are reading the defense, you're going to know that somebody on this side, Devontae Smith probably, is going to come free because there's nobody else over here. Wow. Devontae Smith is <laughs> scot-free right now. He still has the ball in his hand, not even in motion. If you're going to throw this ball to him, this is a double move. Pump fake. Pump fake. Pump fake. There's no pump fake. 
There is no step in the throw because he doesn't want to step up in this pocket. Wow. He's he 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 drifted back on the throw and then he threw her from his back foot when he didn't have to. If you're going to do this pump fake and throw it, stepping up in there, forgetting the contact that's in front of you. But forget all of that. If you are reading the defense, you're going to see Devontae Smith here will get the same yardage with a catch and run. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, busted coverage. Wide open. Wow. But his eyes, watch, watch him from this angle in this protection. Right? He looking over there now. He's he started to look over there. Now he's over there. He's over there. He didn't even give anybody else a chance. Mm. He predetermines where he's going to go, especially when it's a deep brown. Especially when it's a deep brown. You think it's a situation like early in the year where where AJ's turping in his ear? I think that they're friends and they talk all the time. And I think that it could, I don't know if it could affect them or what, but something isn't right. Um, and we may get back to that Jackson play, but there's there's multiple plays in the first half. I can I can keep explaining. This is just two plays that's trying to get you guys to understand some concept. Those two plays were together, so those two plays, so I didn't have to go and search and find. But I could have gave you more plays. I could have gave you six, seven more of those. That's crazy. Man. That was a great breakdown, man. Thank you. Oh, it's all that's, good. Uh, <laughs> like, all right. So hmm. that right there, it had that there are people open on those plays. That that's not a that's not a that's not a, a Brian Johnson thing. Yeah. That's not a Brian Johnson thing. Um that the probably the, the worst one I didn't even show you. Well, no, that last one was pretty bad. But that the, the they the curl flat, cover three, Q. Cover three. Three by three by one. Front side, they go cover three. They bring a safety down that was air, but you know that number three goes over and sits over the ball. So if the quarterback keeps his head straight, he won't be able to react, react outside. It's cover three. Devontae Smith wide open. He chose to come with a shallow cross on the backside of Dallas guy and almost put him in the hospital. Yeah. Like little things, man. And and, and um, so, so he has to do a better job. I love Jalen. I, I want him to do well but I don't know where his mind is at this point. I don't know if it's because the, he doesn't trust the coaching. He don't trust what he's seeing. There's too much pressure. Um, I don't know, but but he has to do better. Santa Baby, the season four fresh cut is finally here with the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped. The leaders in below the waist grooming have just launched their fifth generation lawnmower to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom take care of your special snowflake and watch your south pole shine like never before get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to and using promo code avant for 20 percent off and free shipping mrs claus will thank you everybody knows the lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is the crown jewel of the holidays. Its skin safe technology is a lifesaver and known for reducing nicks and cuts on Santa's sack. Don't forget the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit and handy electric face shaver to cover all your facial hair needs. Get rid of those nasty icicles from your nose and ears with the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Hair Trimmer. And take care of your chestnuts with Manscaped Boxers 2.0. There's even the Shears 3.0 Nail Grooming Kit. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Avant at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use promo code Avant. Say ho, ho, ho to a well-groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. <laughs> hey, it's Jeff Mosher. I love the fall because football's back, but it's also my busiest season between work, kids going back to school, youth sports and activities. There's just not enough time, especially to make a good home cooked meal. That's why I love HelloFresh. They deliver farm fresh food with pre proportioned ingredients 
and seasonal recipes right to my doorstep. No more wasting time at the grocery store because America's number one meal kit helps make home cooking easy, efficient, and affordable. We don't waste time researching new recipes and planning meals. With HelloFresh, the shopping's already done. The perfect amount of ingredients arrive with step-by-step -step recipe cards. How efficient is that? Plus, HelloFresh saves you time and money. HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so you'll get a home-cooked meal without digging deep into your wallet. Don't forget about taste and selection. HelloFresh makes food for meat lovers, seafood lovers, vegetarians, and those who love variety. My personal favorites are the spicy Creole stew and pecan-crusted trout, two dinners my whole family enjoyed, and we actually had time to sit down together and eat at the table. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles and use the code 50Eagles for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles. Use that code 50Eagles for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. Act now for America's number one meal kit. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Dude, you think we are still a contender or you think we're fugazi? Fugazi right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if, if we continue to play, you know, if this team continues to play the way they are playing, it's it's complete fugazi. Um, you know, week after week, same thing, you know, yeah. seeing the same raw concepts on, on defense, getting attacked the same way, still haven't stopped it. Um, I do think they are getting better. I think they're starting to understand where they're supposed to be. Um it's too late in the year, man. It's like this is the time of year where you should really start be starting to kind of peak and really starting to get your body back healthy and be playing your best football. And it's actually the opposite right now. I mean, I do think they're getting a little bit better, but I think earlier in the year, I mean, you know, defensive wise, they play they play much better against the run. Um, you know, they got pressure on the quarterback. I mean, Drew Lock Drew Locke is a backup quarterback and he was sitting in a pocket just dicing, you know, and in, in most in certain situations, kind of dicing mm -hmm. us up, you know. And so um, you know, I, I until they until they first of all figure out who they want to be, you know, defensive coordinator, <laughs> who they want calling the plays, figure that part out, you know, come up with a scheme that works, stick with it. Um, you know just it's just it's really frustrating across the board i just think that they're trying so many different things and different looks instead of sticking with what what works mm -hmm. and with that what happens is you don't have any consistency there's no consistency with this defense right now mm. um so. here's here's my solution to a few things that the eagles can do especially offensively Devontae Smith is the superior route runner. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the superior route, route runner. Didn't say he was the better player, but he's the superior route runner. Use Devontae Smith for stopping. Okay. Stop, like, like stop Stops, your, your stop stuff. Use them for your stop stuff, your 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 route technique technical stuff. Mm-hmm. Your third down conversion stuff like that. Those are usually those are route tech technical things because you got beat man coverage and they're technical going left and right and you got to break somebody down. Use them as that. Use AJ Brown as your vertical guy. And you, I'm not saying that to limit Devonte Smith. You can use him as a vertical guy too, but keep keep AJ Brown on the move. He's better on the move than he is stopping. Okay. I'm not saying that he can't stop. What I'm saying is, is that he's better catching slants, daggers, outcuts, things where he doesn't have to slow his momentum down. Okay. okay. So I think if you can kind of define things like that, it'll help, it'll help people out and what they're doing and what they're looking at. Right. Here's the other thing. Give Jalen Reed real concepts, real, real offensive concepts. And and separate it for him. This is your your, your single house side. This is your two deep side. Separate it. Keep him on one side of the field based on what the coverage is. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see him go one, two, three. It's not there. I go make a play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And and you're going to go one, two, three, left or right. You're going to go one, two, three, check down. One, two, three, check down. One, two, three, go run. 
one, two, check down, go run. It would be something like that, okay? And that's it. But this past week of having multiple concepts that are similar on both sides is counterproductive. If I got okay. stops on the left, I don't need stops on the right. I need something on the move on the right just in case they give me a coverage I, I wasn't anticipating. Okay. All right. See okay. what you're saying. So I think I think that'll that'll help out. Um they I think they need their their dynamic with Brian Johnson as a quarterback coach was better. Yeah. Okay. Um defensively, I think you gotta play Keely Ringo Ringo more. I like what oh. I see from him. Yeah, me too. I, I I think you gotta play Keely Ringo more. I think you gotta you gotta you gotta consider alternating time with him and Bradbury. Great. Once Slay once Slay gets back, once Slay gets back, I wouldn't be surprised that if the Eagles go in on any type of run, that the two corners that are out there are going to be Slay and and, and, and Ringo. Yo, <laughs> I'm with that. He played good, man, and I didn't realize he was that big. Yeah, and he wants to tackle, and he yeah. wants to be up there, and he and and and, and I'm not. I never said this is one game, mm -hmm. but it was pretty. There was pretty good receivers that they were playing against. Yeah, he played well. Yeah, I think I think defensively too, something that they that's going to help them, that should help them. I I'm not, you know, at first I was a, a big fan of the fifty front, five man front, but when you have such uh, deficiencies at linebacker. Um, you know, and you get in your your five man front. Teams are teams are passing the ball when they see us in the in the fifty front. So now you got guys like Brandon Graham dropping into coverage. You got holes all over the middle of the defense. I would get away from that fifty front unless it's you know unless they come out in like twelve thirteen personnel, and you you know for sure it's going to be a run. Mm -hmm. I, I would get out of that. They need to get back into a four man front. Let the front, I mean, these guys are good in the front four. Just rotate them, you know, and that's going to give you an extra defender to get in those passing lanes in the middle of the field. That's where teams are attacking, right down the middle of the field and, um, you know, in those crucial situations. So um, I'm, I'm, I agree. I, they need to get out of the 50 front on early downs. They need to get, you know, keep Ringo on the, on the field more. Um, I like Brown. I like what he's doing. Reed's, you know, he's getting there. Byard's. He's still, as a veteran, I'm expecting a little bit more out of him. But, you know, he's he's doing fine. Um, Morrow's, you know, he's he's Morrow. I think Shaq, Shaq uh, Leonard actually, you know, played well. It looked like he was moving everybody around. He was communicating. So they, they have pieces to get better. Um, they just got to – they just got to commit to, 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 to something, right? Yeah, Stay away not. from – yeah, it's. I see Brad. I don't understand the rotation. Like, there's Job out there one time. There's Ringo yeah. out there one time. There's Roby out there one time. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, why are so many people? It's no sense. Like, why? Like, why? Like, this is not like, like you don't have to, sir. This is not a D line rotation. Yeah. <laughs> the only way they're going to get better is they're out there in the same spot consistently. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um. Oh, this we we got to move forward. But um, before we move forward, tell me about Sidney Brown from your perspective because I think he's over aggressive at times. Like, how can you taper back? He's really he's really fast to a line scrimmage. You can see his explosion. You can see it when he's moving, and I like what I'm seeing. But it seems like he's really aggressive and gets beat sometimes. Like. He had outside leverage on Kenneth Walker for that touchdown, end up just getting destroyed. Um, Brandon Graham, Brandon Graham, you know, got hit inside by, you know, a tight end. But the next guy up, he had a he had him, but he was and he was three yards outside of him and still missed him. Yeah. Yeah, that play actually I, I like that play. It was a, a 12 personnel. I think we might have been in nickel, um, or some type of dime coverage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it was 12 personnel. They had the two tight ends kind of um, offset, and it was a, kind of an influence box. So the outside tight end basically mm -hmm. pulled Brown out, and then I think BG kind of got stuck inside. Um, but I digress. So go, going back to, to Brown. So he's, to me, he's one of those, he's a young player. And he's got all the want to, right? He, he's flying around. He's, he's hitting people. He's sticking people. Um, he's got to do a better job wrapping up. He's got to do a better job lowering his target on his tackles. I mean, this is in college. You're, you you know, Ken Walker is a, is a dude, like he's strong. Like you're not going to just arm tackle him high. Right. So I think he's, he's got the mindset to play safety. I think he's aggressive. He's got to slow himself down and understand that in order to, to really affect. So it's more important. It's, it's more important as a safety, as a young safety, it's more important to be in the, in the right position at the right time. It's less important how fast you get there. And he's got enough speed to be able to, um, you know, change direction. He's got enough speed to fill it. He's got to slow himself down mentally and say, okay, I know where he's going, but if I go right now and if I go like a bat out of Hades, I'm going to, I'm going to either, you know, overrun it or, you know, it's what we saw last night. I'm going to miss the tackle. So I think he's got the right mindset. I think he's going to get better. I just think he's got to mentally slow himself down and mentally when you slow yourself down, it'll make you play a little bit more discipline, if, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Right. So yeah, it does. The, the discipline will come once he understands Okay, if if it's a if if I know my the strong side, right? Let's say I'm on the weak side as a safety. If I know that everyone on the on the right side of the field is doing their job, this ball should bounce right back to me on the run game, right? If I know that I'm in a cover three and I'm a crow flat defender, I know that even though this guy is pulling me to the flat, I don't have to go right now and take it because there's going to be something behind me. Like we talked about with the Hank route, right? Mm -hmm. You play with some depth and you force the quarterback to throw it to the guy in front of you. So it's just, it's going to come with some experience. Um, but I do like what I've seen out of him, man. I, I like the way he's flying around. Um, you just got to be a little bit, a little bit more in control. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great job. Great analysis. Um Defensive perspective, the last touchdown to Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. What do you see on that play? Just Bradbury's playing the sticks, being flat-footed? Yeah. I mean, so that the, the my frustration with, with the play call started in the beginning of that drive. Um, there was two third and tens, and we called the same coverage both times. The first time was the throw to uh, – um to um DK. DK and the second time third and ten was the throw to JSN. They called the same play offensively, it was the same exact play offensive. The safety's coming down, safety is the back. The uh Moro is popping out and he's basically a low hole player. Mm -hmm. So two plays, third and ten, same call, same coverage. Same offensive play, both resulted. One, the first one was like a 15 yard game for a first down. The next one was a touchdown. No touchdown. Mm -hmm. And both times they went after Bradbury. So th that's telling me two things. First of all, they they they're seeing that we're playing that coverage because I don't I don't like to call. I wouldn't call cover one with no pressure in the third and ten situation. To me, that's a, that's a, a, a you know that's a recipe that's, for disaster. Exactly. You yeah, know, you, you call cover two or up. two man. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to go win the game. You can't sit back there and expect the team to give you the game. Yep. And so, you know, the the, the touchdown Bradbury is just off, playing off, flat footed, sitting, thinking that you know it's he's he's got help over top, but not realizing it's you know it's a it's a wide field. You got young safeties back there. You can't just sit on a route at ten yards. And expect that safety to be able to play. We were always told as a safety, listen, it's a bonus if you can get outside the hash and make a play on any type of outside throw. Corners know that. Hey, listen, it's it's cover three, it's cover one. It's the same coverage in our mind. It's basically man, and I'm probably not going to get help. If I do, it's going to be late. And so the un unfortunate thing is, again, I don't, I don't like the play call. I think it was a terrible play call. I think that Patricia did do a, a 
a better he did a fine job for the most part calling plays i think mm -hmm. you know those two calls you can't call cover one with no pressure on third and ten situations twice i mean i just think that's just this is yeah. it's not very smart so mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> There you go. I'm not gonna comment on it. I, I just I know what I saw, I know what I heard. Um Drew Locke told Jackson Smith and Jigba that if he, he gets if he gets one on one that I'm coming to you before the game, before the play. He that's mm -hmm. that that that's that was was relayed to him. And that clearly lets me know that a few things that the that the other team thinks about our offense and our our, our team in general. Yeah. I wrote some things down. What the tape says that other teams think about our team. What the tape shows. Um, okay. What other teams think about our defense is that James Badbury can't cover. That every team believes that. The tape says that. Not me saying it. The tape shows that they think he cannot cover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that if you drop four, I mean, if you rush four and drop seven, Jalen Hurts won't be able to figure you out. Yeah. And if you include an inside rush with your ends and collapse the pocket inside, it's going to frustrate him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Edge runs work. Any edge runs. Any edge runs reverses, tosses, any of that, you'll make yards. Yeah. Ends have no discipline. Um, that we're soft on the edges, offensively and defensively. Oh. Right? Corners yeah. don't love to tackle. Receivers don't love to block. Oh, I see all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. After that, you know, bunch routes, crossing routes, somebody's yeah. going to be wide open. Uh, yeah, motion. <laughs> you can add a lot of stuff motion. to that. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, those are just some of the thoughts that came to my mind. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I agree with you on those plays. Um before we before we look ahead, right? Um, before we look ahead, third down conversions, six for fourteen. They were, um, they had four third and tens that they converted in the game, which is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, yeah, this is insane. Can't be nobody doing that. Can't be. Let me let me guys let me let me let me let me tell you what happened on the last play of the game. The one that Julian Love came from the post in order to. He never really got to the middle of the field. That's number one. He started on A.J. Brown's side. He ran toward the middle halfway and then reversed course back because Jay Hurts started to look that way. Um, that play wasn't, matter of fact, let's see if I can do this real fast. Circle the the Z receiver down here has a, a circus route, but it's a pump. So he's supposed to run in here, run out here, and then go up. That's what's supposed to happen, okay? On this side, this guy here has the basic route. That's the route that I that I caught 90% of my routes, my passes on this route here that Quiz is what I'm running here. And you go inside here, you got to hold safeties. If it's cover two, you can take the middle. It's 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 like an option route, but from deeper. And then this guy up here just has a normal circus. It's double circus, double circus, Z pump, Z circle pose, or Z Z Z pump. You can say it Z, but it's a circus pump. And this guy here has the circus too, and he gets out. By this way, watch this guy kill him. But this is where he wants to throw the ball. This is a route, right? AJ Brown runs an awful route. Yeah. This is not a circus pump. Your body has to be square this way here. 
and around. He just runs around this guy and doesn't give a fake at all. He he just bleeds his route. I just I'm gonna back it up and show you guys again. He bleeds his route, which causes him to get down the field way too fast. And now this ball is sh- sh- underthrown, and Jalen Hurts has to do a better job of of looking. Now let's let's look up at the top here. Look at um look at Devontae Smith. Yeek. <laughs> this is a route, man. And if if I'm if I'm if I need a route to win the game, I'm going to go to Devontae Smith. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling everybody that right now. If I need a route to win the ball game, I'm going to Devontae Smith because he's more of a technician. Yep. He's more of a technician. This guy was sitting on him, and that took a lot of effort. But look at look at look at the, where Devontae is when he's making this play. AJ runs a bad route. Jalen's, of course, already predetermined where he's going to look at the ball. And yes, it's have Jalen, have Devon, um, have AJ Brown. But Jalen threw the ball where the ball sh- should be close to being. It's just that he took forever. I mean, he he um he didn't run the route correctly and he got got down the field too fast um that's part of it the other part jason jalen got to take care of this guy with his eyes well and again this is another situation where seattle we were not taking advantage right seattle blue coverage right here they got triple covered on quiz and game gainwell is coming free he still be running yeah, they, yeah, game well was the check down. The check down. Yeah, game well the check down. They blew that in this, you know, they blew the check down. But I said, he already predetermined where, where this ball was going to go. That's insane, man. He already predetermined that. Devontae Smith was open this entire game, you guys. Mm. He was open the entire, he was open the entire game. And it's like that most games. Oh. Okay. Um, Last thing, let's look ahead, Q, to, to the Giants game. What are you expecting from them? Giants, like Cardinals, Cardinals, Giants again, last three games. You think it'll be – we're 12 and a half point favorites. I'm putting some money on the Giants, by the way. <laughs> I'm not saying that the Giants are going to win the game, but to think that we're 12 and a half points better than the way we've been playing, scoring, you know, 17 points a game the last couple of games. Yeah. I mean, they they got to win out. I mean, you know, you want to you, you want to end the season on a high note. You know, going into obviously that that last game might you might not need it depending on what happens with Dallas, but you always want to you always want to be playing your best full, football towards the end of the year. And this is a great opportunity to kind of right the ship. It's a great opportunity against a, a lower um, lower level team to kind of get your confidence back up, right? Going into the playoff run. So um I'm expecting them to come out and play, play pretty, pretty hard. Um, you know, the Giants aren't they're they're it should be hey. it should be pretty yeah, you're right. Hey, listen, <laughs> let me tell you this here. I'm I'm putting my hundred bucks, I'm putting my hundred bucks on the Giants to cover this to cover the spread. That's what I'm doing. I'm not saying that the Giants are gonna win. I'm just saying that the Giants are not going to lose by more than 12 and a half points. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what, you that's believe what, in Tommy Cutlets? I much? believe in anybody that's playing quarterback <laughs> against our defense right now that's passing the ball. We got beat by Zach Wilson and Drew Locke. Oof, that's brutal. Yeah. So, do I think that we should win the game? We definitely should win. Our schedule is favorable. Cardinals is a wild card. You never know which team we're going to get. We got to go out there. I believe we got to go out there again. Yeah. Go out there. I think we got to go out there again. So we've been out there a lot. Yeah, man. You remember playing? You remember playing Christmas? Uh, what was it Christmas Day in in Arizona? No. It was either Christmas Eve. I think it was Christmas Eve. We we had a game mm-hmm. in Arizona. Against the Cardinals, yeah. and I remember coming home so tired, couldn't even open presents with the kids in the morning. Oh, nah, yeah. that, was, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I think I think we should be able to bounce back, but 
Yeah, we'll see, man. But those are some of the things that we're seeing. This is the Q&A podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to Adam and Jeff and everyone that's responsible. Email your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Uh, everybody that said, what's up to me, that I saw out uh, doing appearances this week, shout out to you guys. Q, you got the last word. Hey, man. Hey. Love it. Love love having the show with you. Having a good time today. It wasn't, you know, the, what we wanted to be talking about. We want to be celebrating another win, but, you know, it is what it is. But listen, see you guys yeah. next week. If we don't see you, have a happy Merry Christmas, everyone, or whatever you happy celebrate. Happy holiday. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. All of that. All of it. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Be sure to check out our friends at PHLSportsNation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto. So make sure you check them out at PHLSportsNation.com and on Twitter at PHLSportsNation. Sports Nation.